I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing the little Thanksgiving turkey and he is made up of foil feathers, a coyote gourd, and an egg gourd or a spinner gourd. So any of those combinations. So we're going to start with his foil feathers first. And the foil comes in sheets or rolls, and you can find it at your craft store. They have different names for it. Some call it um, metal foil, and some call it embossing foil, and different things like that. So look for it under those kind of names. Um, I like to work with 36 to 40 gauge. The, this is actually 36. I prefer it. It's a little bit thicker. Don't try and use regular foil. I've had people try to do that. It will just tear on you. If you can't find it, your craft uh, supply stores, I know that some of our gourd art suppliers carry it as well like blue well so um, that's what we're going to use today and I already pre-cut my size here and we're going to start by making a feather for our turkey and just take a blank piece of paper and you want to kind of think about what size it is and I'm going to just draw a tall skinny feather to make him a little bit more right there in the middle and then I'm going to put a line try and get it as close to the center as I can get this right down the middle okay not too bad a little bit to the left there that is your basic little pattern and just think about how high you want those so I already have one pre-done over here and that would be what size you'd cut your foil and this is craft foam and you have to have the craft foam to make this process work because when you push in with your tools it can go down if you don't have that there there's nothing no give and you're not going to get that curve in your foil so I'm just taping it on here and scotch tape works so much better and I'm going to use my number two embossing tool the small end and I am going to trace I'm going to push this down pretty hard my little tail feather here and I do have a video on um, how to make embossed feathers on my website too you can check out that's a fun one so we've got those down you can always lift it up kind of look see how it looks Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. I have one little dot that didn't kind of go right there, so I'm just going to smooth him out. Now what we want to do is take this and flip it the opposite direction. And I'm going to take my zero tool now, my small end, and we're going to start putting the little tail feathers in, and I'm angling them down the way a feather would go and we're just putting all of these in now you can see I'm not going over the ridges we're leaving the ridges there you don't want to take away from that because we're actually going down where those ridges are coming up we want to make sure that they stay that way go back to the top here All right, now we've got that in. Now what we're gonna do next is we're going to cut it. And I'm gonna grab my little craft scissors here. It's one nice thing about working in the studio. If we forget something, we can grab it. Now see how this has a curve to it? I don't wanna cut in the curve, I wanna cut at the bottom. So I'm getting all of that curve. So we're gonna take it And I like to use little tiny craft. These are actually medical scissors and they work really, really good. One with small little points. 
Okay, so we've cut that out. Now we're going to come back one more time. We're going to flip it back to the original direction. So however you did it, we just flipped it back over again. And we're going to push those original lines back down. And you'll see your feather even curl more, especially on the sides. And you want to make sure that you don't have any sharp points because this can be really sharp. If you do, just round them off with your scissors. And see how that kind of all curled in. Okay, so we have our feather. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to color it. And I am going to use the Adirondack alcohol inks. And I'm going to work on a little tray here just in case I spill any of those. And I'm going to use... If you use this in a metal tray, it will stain it. And I'm going to do one color at a time. And I'm going to start with my yellow. And you can pick whatever fallish colors you want to. There is no right or wrong on this. And I am just going to come in here. This brush had some black in it here. And put this yellow... And you could do it a certain pattern where you have the tip one way and then into another color and another color. However you want to do that. And don't forget to do the back as well. So we put our yellow in. And I am going to put orange. I think this is sunset orange if I remember right. Yep, that's sunset orange. So we're going to put our orange on. So we've got our orange, and then I'm going to use red, and this is cranberry red. And you can color any of your foils that you're working on or your metals like this with these colors. That's what I really like about working with those. And with, I love alcohol ink, so that you know me, know that I really like the alcohol inks. I always tease that you can't screw them up. Now the last color I'm going to use is my base color and I'm going to use it on my turkey is Espresso. And I'm going to shake it a little bit because I have noticed, especially on this guy, the more he sits, the darker he gets. So, and I'm going to kind of come in and just do everything I haven't before, plus kind of blend all the colors in. Another thing you could do if you wanted to paint it like the tip one color, and then take this right down the middle as well. But we're just going to kind of go between all the colors. There is no right or wrong on this. Do we just want to cover up the silver? If you also didn't have the alcohol inks, you could come in with acrylic colors and sponge them on and give it a texture. And I've done that before too, so that's fun to do. And you don't have to spend the money on something you don't have. Okay, so we've got that guy all done. We're going to let him dry. And what we're going to do now is I cut seven of these feathers. And you could do the tail turkey in five if you wanted to. And I am probably going to move this. Can you see with that tray all right there? Or do we need to move it out of the tray? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting our feathers together. And we want to keep it, I'm going to let him dry just a little bit longer. We want to keep it an even, or excuse me, an odd number. So what I've noticed is where these come up in the middle, you can kind of glue the other one on because the other parts kind of go down. So we're going to kind of lay the feathers all on 
each other starting at the middle of each feather. Okay, and I'm going to glue mine on with E6000. E6000 is that hard to glue anything, rock to rock, stone to stone, glass. It's just really a good glue. So I'm just going to come in here, and I kind of saw where those were going to be laid. And I'm going to put E6000 more on the parts that are up than the parts that go down. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them. Now, those, that's the one in the middle, so we're not going to put glue on him. And then these, see how I put the ones on the left, on the right side. Now, these are on the left side because those are the parts that are touching or coming together. That's why we want to work on a tray. We don't want those glue on everything else. So put those two together and kind of push them down so that you have places of the glue. And I had kind of made my bottom of my feather a little bit flat, but you could make it pointed and bring it more into a point. There's nothing right or wrong about that. However you think that should go. And I'm just working on a cheap cookie sheet that I bought from the dollar store. They make really good little trays when you're working with your dies or your glue gun. I use it a lot for my glue gun. All right, we've got that all kind of tucked in and pushed down so that everything is touching and it will all be glued. At this point in time, I would um, make sure uh, I have a couple spots I noticed that aren't quite yellow. Once you make sure that it's all glued down, we're going to leave it for a while. Now, on your E6000, they really tell you to leave it for 24 hours and let it dry really good. And I know I've tried to rush this in the past and it ended up biting me. So I am going to let this dry, completely dry. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start working on the body. Okay, let's get started on the body of the turkey. And I'm going to do that again with my alcohol inks, Adirondack alcohol. And again, I am using the espresso. And I shook it really well. And you could base coat these with acrylic paint. But I wanted to get kind of a feathery look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the whole entire gourd. And you're going to see different colors in it. The more you work it, the redder it gets. See how we've got the blacks and the reds and the kind of almost orangish and yellow colors in this. It's really funny, all the fun colors you get. And of course, the longer it sets, the more it kind of turns a black color. I added just a little bit of water to that. Keep that a little bit lighter and I'm going to add a little bit more water. And kind of do the front there. And grab this back part here so we have one base coat on. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and do our head as well. And on this one I'm going to use a little egg gourd. Probably. All right. So we're going to do it in layers. So 
side, which is my back part. That's going to be my back part. We're going to kind of start pulling this out in layers. And I'm kind of got a brush that's a little bit uneven. Or you can use a scruffy brush. So there's our first layer. Now we're going to pull it out to our second layer. said you could base coat this if you want to but I like the look this gives it and then even after we do our quick wood parts I'm going to do the same technique after they're dry to them as well a little bit more here two more layers. So I'm about on a fourth layer. And we're going to do kind of this last layer kind of covering in his tail right there. So we've got kind of a layered look there. So let's get busy and do our little guy over here. And let's start up here and work my way down. The thin part is going to be his neck. And like I said, if you wanted to use a spinner gourd, you could too. That kind of comes down into the neck part of it. We need just a little bit more dye here. Not too much. The alcohol, I hate to do it out too fast because it does evaporate too. Okay, finish up that last part and that last part in the very end, I'm just going to hold it there, is going to get covered up with our quick wood. So, okay, so it's kind of a it's kind of feather looking and you can see how the different textures and the different colors it gets from a yellow to a red to a black to almost a blue in this one. So you get all those different kind of feathery looks. So we're going to add our feet on. And we're going to use quick wood. And I'm going to spray my hands with my vegetable spray here. I'm going to wipe a little bit so when I put my feet on there, it doesn't stick to it. And I've taken all my rings off that have anything to stick to in them. And I'm going to remove my ends. And I'm actually going to cut two pieces right now. And these are for my feet so that way I know exactly how much I use. Set that first one aside. Don't forget to pull the plastic off. That is so important. I can't tell you how many classes I do. And people will ask me what is wrong. And they are the plastic left in the quick one. So make sure you get all of that out. And if you haven't watched my quick wood videos, I really suggest you do. There's a lot of really good information that we don't go into detail here. But to activate the quick wood, we have to knead it. See, I've still got some marbleizing color in here, so we still need to mar do, uh, knead it some more. So we're going to knead it some more, and it does have kind of almost a tuna fishy smell, so which is not my favorite thing. But all right, now. I'm going to break a little piece off for his leg and I'm going to roll this into a ball and I'm going to hold it with my back finger and start to push it forward. So I'm getting, um, I guess, kind of a pear shape there. And depending on how big you want his feet to be, and you can even look at your the little gourd. Now remember, this is what holds him up, so you need him to be big enough and to bounce the turkey. So what we do, after you've kind of got the shape you like, we're going to cut it so you have three toes. 
Now this one in the front is going to look kind of funny till we get done shaping them here. So go up in between each of the toes and bring them to a point. And make sure you get all of this stuff in here. Now we're going to bring, it, bring this guy into a point and he's going to come out and stick out longer. See how that worked? So we're just kind of bringing these guys to a point and that looks really good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little line in them. Now this little guy is going to be kind of our base to give it some height. You don't have to do this, but it, turkey sits up and shows its feathers off better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my knife here and kind of pull the clay down into the next layer. So that line kind of disappears and then I'm going to go around and kind of smooth that out with my fingers here. You also can use your wax tools. They work really good with this. If you start to get sticky, get a little bit more of that vegetable spray. Just don't put that vegetable spray where you're going to stick your gourd onto so it doesn't not stick. Okay. So we've got that. I'm going to kind of bring him in a little bit because I kind of... Now I like to put some little lines in and then put some little lines in the back as well. Okay, so we've got our one little foot done. Now we're going to build our next little foot right next to him so that we don't have to move him and we can just set our gourd on top. So we want to really think about the placement of that when we do that. Now you see I didn't do that all at one time. It has about 25 minutes workable time. Now, it, the longer you get it before you get it onto your gourd, the fresher it is, the better it sticks. I guess is what the words I'm trying to say. So we want to always try to keep it, get it on there as soon as we can so we don't mix the next batch up. If you have any of it fall off, any of the clay, just glue it back on with E6000. It's not a big deal at all, especially if you've been working with it for a while and it starts to get dry on you. Okay, we're going to take that little bit off like we did before. See if that's about the size of the other one. Okay. Alright, now I'm going to I think I'm going to come over here, that way you can see and I can see what I'm doing. Start building that second foot. And like I said, think about where it is, because we're just going to put the gourd right on it when we're done with that. That was a little bit too close on that one. Let's get that noisy thing out of here. Okay, now let's put our toes in. Try to think about them being as even as you can get them. And you want them the same size as the other one. And remember, this is not the way they have to be done. If you have another way to do them, that's fine. And if you want to come in and just set them right there without building that up, that's okay too. Alright, those are pretty close. And we're going to put our little lines in them. Make sure you cleaned up between the middle. There's no toe jam there. Alright. Come in, place that little guy right there. That gives him his height. And I'm going to smooth that line down into the next one. I love to work with 
the quick wood is the clay as your results are immediately you don't have to bake it and working with that my daughter used to do polymer clay and still does is excellent in it but we lost so much of her great artwork because it didn't cook right so that's not an option with this which i really really appreciate it is just dry in an hour if you need to smooth that out you can also use your spray again and smooth it out a little bit more all right i'm going to put the lines in and then i am going to put the gourd on Think about where's your front and what's your tail feathers and then set him on there and think about his weight distribution. And I've also used other things to hold up on either side if I needed to, you know, to kind of hold it in place while it dries. We finished with him. So now we're going to come over and we're going to work on our face. So we've got our little face here. Now we don't need a bunch of quick wood for the face. And it's better to cut less and need more than it is to cut too much and have it go to waste. I have some little different sized um, molds. So if I don't use my quick wood, I can make little flowers or little bugs or insects or different things like that so it doesn't go to waste. I have some itty bitty ones up to bigger ones. So, Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on his eyes. Now again, I try to take two pieces the same size because that's the hardest part. and make sure that they're the same amount. And they're pretty close. So I wrote, put them into a ball. Now we're going to put his face all on one side. So up on top, that's the top of his head. So we're going to bring these balls over and I'm just going to push them down so that I have texture and get in the same size and if it doesn't work out do it again it's not a big deal don't worry about that now on this one over here I did another little ball and pushed it on now that's harder to paint so if you'd rather just leave it a flat surface just leave it a flat surface and then we'll paint his eye all on so I'm going to show you how I did that second layer and you could leave it round if you wanted to We've got his pupil there. All right. So I like him with a little bit of eyebrows. An eyebrow gives a character, more character. How's that for wording? You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And I kind of just rub it till I get the size I want and squish it into place and you can have one up one down you can study your eyebrows and see what's the surprise look or the happy look with the eyebrows they distinguish a lot of the characteristics and things like that so and they really set the eyes off all right, now I have a little brush here. This was in my clay set. You could use a little toothpick or whatever if you wanted to. And I'm adding texture to those. So those look more like brows or hair or something there. So we've got some texture in that. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna build his beak next. And I'm gonna build the top beak first. And we're just gonna start with a piece and kind of figure out how big you want it. Don't try to make it too big or too small for your piece and all I do is start to bring it forward like in square so I squish it this way and I squish it this way so I'm kind of making it a square coming out to a point with this part flat 
So I'm going to try and set it on here. And I need to leave a little bit of room for his... I know this isn't politically correct. Gobble, wobble, whatever we're putting on him. Besides his waddle down here. So the little top part, red part that goes above this. So I have it a little bit to a point. And watch it a little bit while it's drying here. So this one comes down. Now our next one is going to be the part going up and it should be smaller. So this is the bottom part of his bill. And you could just do one if you wanted to and kind of even slice it a little bit so it needed, but I like doing it in two parts. See how that, there he is with his mouth open. Now this one is coming up. So we're bringing him kind of up now. So now we've got that one. Okay, we're going to do our two little pieces on top. And what I do with them, and I should have my wax paper down, but I moved it over for my feet that are drying. I leave one part long, and do these in two pieces, and rub this one almost out to a point. Little bit too, and one should be longer than the other side. And we're going to put that on one side there, and I'm going to lay this up on top here. And let's make the other one. And you can see I'm using my scissors to set my egg in. A lot of times, he's too small to set him into my vegetable spray lid, but a lot of times when I'm working with gourds or something like that, I set them in there to hold them while I'm working on. So if you have an item like that, that works really good. Okay, remember what I said about these being different lengths. One can be bigger and one can be littler. So... I'm just going to bring it around that beak. I'm going to kind of move my beak a little bit, so I'm going to move him up just a little bit there. Okay, so we've kind of got those on pretty good. And we're going to come in and do his waddle part. And I would like it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a tiny strip more. And I'm going to take take what I have now and work it back into this new piece. That makes it all the same consistency and actually freshens up the old. That way you don't let it go to waste and you can still end up with the size piece you need. That's the hardest problem I have with the quick wood is cutting a small enough piece because you've got your two parts. So we're just going to make this and we're going to make it kind of like a teardrop shape where it's bigger at the bottom. We're going to flatten it out. Now what I like to do is I like to hang mine off and not have them go directly onto the gourd. If you look at this little guy over here, his is hanging off. And if you get it just sticking on there, that's okay, whatever you need to do. So we've got that kind of ready to go on. So I'm going to bring him over here, and he goes right underneath that bill. So he's kind of pushed up against that. And I'm going to come in with my tool, and I'm going to give him texture. Do it on the sides too, so that it's not a smooth piece. And then what I do at this point is I pull it off, and I find somewhere where I can set this, and this can continue to dry 
just like that. So we're going to let this guy dry a minute and I'm going to come and show you how to attach it to the body. Okay, I've actually switched little heads here because this guy's completely dry and you'll notice he's a spinner so I just want to point that out. I've used two different types to kind of give us a variation of what we're doing. Also, instead of the coyote gourd, you could use one of the small little gourds that kind of came to a point in the back here, or you could use a can, a mini canteen, not canteen, excuse me, cannonball gourd, whatever kind of works in the shape. But you know, the ones that kind of come up a little bit here with the tail feathers would be okay too. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the head onto the body. So we're going to take quite a bit of clay here. Again, make sure you get all that plastic wrap off. And we're going to knead it. It's just real good here. And then I'm going to start to kind of get it in to shape. We want this back part wider, a little bit narrower on the neck. And we're going to start, I'm going to wrap this around the neck. I'm going to start to get him in the position we want him. Spray my hands here again, and I don't have my apron on. Shame on me, especially in a good shirt. And what you want to do is just blend this out so that it doesn't show up. Just take your finger and kind of wisp it out. So once you come back in and paint over that, it's just going to disappear. And I just use the alcohol inks again and just do it the same way I did the head and the body. And just do it in layers. And I think it blended in pretty well. I didn't think that showed up too much at all. Now, right there we want to make sure that we keep the vegetable oil off of that as well as we can just wiping it on my paper towel a little bit. Now we want to kind of bend this back part a little so that his head is coming up. Now this is probably the toughest thing about the whole process is getting that. And you may have to work with it a little bit while it's drying. And don't be afraid to position it a certain way and you may find that one type of gourd, the little gourds, work better than the other gourds for you. So use what's best. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to feather this out so you lose that line once he's colored. You can also use a little bit of water if you need to, too. It will help smooth that out. We're going to continue over back here. Okay, we've got that kind of smoothed down. And don't worry about trying to get it too perfect. Birds aren't perfect, and you've kind of got lumps and bumps for feathers and all of that kind of stuff, too. So, just watch his positioning. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put something kind of over it that's a little bit too tall while it's drying as well. Or you could lay him kind of backwards. So we're going to leave him like that and we're going to start attaching his wing feathers. Now these have dried for 24 hours, so these are nice and bendable. And you kind of want to bend them towards the shape of the gourd and think about where it's going to sit on your turkey once you get your turkey done. I think that works pretty 
pretty good kind of setting him up and letting that kind of dry that direction. Don't be afraid to work it a little bit and make sure he doesn't lose his position. And kind of look at him from time to time, make sure he's not too far up. So we're going to get these turkey feathers on, and I think the best way to do that, because you've got so many layers there, is I'm going to put them on with quick wood. Now again, remember I said you could use five tail feathers instead of seven if you wanted to. Don't worry about that, whatever you want to do. So we're going to get this clay all on. I'll blend it together. And you don't need a lot of this. I may have even cut more than I would like to use on this. And you don't want to bring it all the way over. I'm not going to put it on the last two tail feathers. Kind of see where it sits and where you think that you need it. You don't want it to squish out below that area right there either. So we're going to take our little turkey and kind of see where his little tail feathers go back there and I am going to squish them on. I'm going to bring them down a little bit more even. Squish that on him and make sure that that looks nice and even. And you can bend it a little bit more, the foil, however you want that foil to go or you think it should go, if you think it should curve a little bit more. Now, you can see just a tad of white right there from the clay. Just take your um, brush with a little bit of the ginger alcohol ink on it and um, cover that up. And I think those are too high, so I'm going to move those. And again, that's a great thing with the cookwood is you don't like something, you take it off and do it again. So I think those were too far up. I'm going to make sure I get them nice and even and more, more straight down. Which I like that better. Okay, so I think we've got him pretty well done. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the painting because trying to do that all on a video would be another 30 minutes or so. So we're going to set him there and we're going to grab our little guy here. So we've already got his body and the feathers done which is awesome. We don't have to paint any of those. I came in with a golden or an empire yellow and base coated his feet in the brown little nails on his feet and the lines I used a medium brown. I base coated his wattle red. I put a little bit of red in his beak. The beak is the same golden um, uh, yellow or empire gold as his feet are. Now when you get to his eyes you want to start by doing all of them white first and put a couple of layers on and then I came back and made a smaller circle which would be the inside um, part of his eye and then of course the very part would be last would be the pupil which would be black so we do that and then I also did the eyebrows black I sponged a little bit or uh, stippled a little bit of the gold on his eyebrows to offset him as well as white on his waddle in the tops of his feet for highlights and I took a little tiny liner brush and gave him a reflective light in the eyes. It's really important to give the reflective light to the eyes. If you don't want to make a little line, just do a tiny, tiny little dot with your brush or your smallest embossing tool or wax tool, whatever is um, there for you to use. But when you get all done, you have your wonderful little Thanksgiving turkey and it will be one that you'll have around for years to come. I hope you really enjoyed him 
and had fun making him. If you have any questions about what we did today, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com for any of the products we may have used. You can visit our website at miriamjoy.com. There's also that link where you can jump over to watch more of these fun YouTube videos as well as the Facebook link. And you don't have to be a member of Facebook. You can just jump up over onto that website and there is something posted new for you every day as well as fun contests. So thank you for joining me today and God bless.